Hey, what's up guys? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'll be showing you how to install the Tusk Power Steering Kit. Power steering makes for a great addition to your UTV if you don't have it already. So having power steering on your machine, whether you're out enjoying the trails, rock crawling or racing makes the experience that much more enjoyable. So what makes power steering so appealing is that it takes a lot, if not all of the work out of steering your machine. At all speeds, it eliminates a lot of that unwanted feedback, like when encountering large obstacles or difficult terrain. So whether you're out on the trails, enjoying technical terrain or high speed desert, the Tusk Power Steering Kit makes for a great addition to your vehicle that will further enhance your driving experience and enjoyment. So today we'll be installing this on a 2015 Polaris Ranger Trail 900. Now keep in mind that we do offer a specific kit for several vehicles. The installation process is similar, but will vary depending on your machine. Not only can the Tusk Power Steering Unit be installed on machines that don't currently have it, but it can also be used as a replacement for OEM power steering setups. Now the kit will come complete with a specific set of instructions that will help make the job easy, but today we're gonna show you how to get it installed. To install this kit, you'll just need some general hand tools. You may need some pry bars to remove the original prop shaft for the original steering. You'll need some safety glasses, some anises for installing the new prop shafts, and the kit will come complete with the lower and upper prop shafts, the steering control box, steering motor itself, the mounting brackets to get it installed, as well as the wiring harness. Now you may also need some electrical tape and zip ties, and you will also need the service manual. To begin, the first thing that we need to do is remove this access panel here. Once this has been pulled off, we need to remove the coolant reservoir that's located right here. Now the reason for this is for ease of access because the next part that we'll be removing is the pinch bolt on the prop shaft at the steering rack. You can find the steering's pinch bolt by following the steering's prop shaft from the steering wheel down to the steering rack. Next we can remove the upper dash panel. We've got two fasteners that are a Torx 40. Pull these two fasteners, then we will pop the dash panel out this way and then bring it towards the front of the machine. Next, we need to remove the steering wheel. In order to do so, we need to take off this panel. To do that, we'll use a thin flathead screwdriver or a knife, and then we can remove the 24 millimeter nut that holds the steering wheel in place. Now, I'm gonna take the nut and slightly thread it onto the shaft temporarily. So it'll take considerable amount of force to pull this off. You may need help from a friend. Next, we can remove this top bolt here that secures the tilt adjuster to the steering shaft. Now, the tools that we're using for this are a 4 millimeter Allen and a 10 millimeter wrench. Next, there are two bolts that we need to remove that hold the whole steering assembly to the subframe of the front part of the machine. To do that, we're going to be using a 15 millimeter socket and hand wrench. All right, so once we've got the bolts removed, we can take the steering assembly Drop it down and out. We're going to roll it to the driver's side. Pull off this bushing spacer. Then we're going to grab it where it pivots, like so. And then we can pull this assembly off of the prop shaft. And there is last one last bushing spacer. Then we can pull the rubber grommet that's located at the firewall. Now, to pull the steering shaft itself free, it may be very difficult. Now, to do that, we can take the steering shaft as it is here. We can take a hammer and we can strike this section of it. And as we strike it, it will shock it and assist it in pulling it free. Now, if that's not working, you may want to take a pry bar and begin to pry the pinch bolt fitting at the rack and pinion to remove it from the rack. Next, we can pull these four nuts that are holding the brake pedal plate to the chassis. Next, we're going to remove the seats. All right, next we need to remove the center console. To do so, we've got a few darts to remove and two fasteners. Next, we can take the brackets. This would be the bracket that mounts where the brake stay is. And we can take the steering, power steering bracket. We're gonna mount it onto the brake stay bracket like so. Now we're going to take the bolt, we're going to thread it in through the back, take one of our nuts and thread it on. Then we can loosely tighten these nuts, not all the way, but leave them just loose enough so that we can have some adjustment here in the plate. 
Then we can take the bracket and we're going to place it onto the foot brake assembly. Take and re-thread the four nuts that we removed earlier. Next we can grab the steering motor itself. We're going to take three of these larger fasteners. And we'll place this onto the power steering bracket. With the power steering assembly loosely mounted, rotate and adjust the position so that it has sufficient clearance. Once sufficient clearance has been established, tighten down the fasteners. Next we can take some anti-seize and apply it to the power steering motor's input and output shafts, as well as the steering rack's pinion shaft. Next we can install the lower end of the prop shaft. So this prop shaft will connect the bottom side of the power steering motor to the steering rack's pinion shaft. Now before we install it, we need to make sure that the length adjuster pinch bolt is loose so that it can move like this. Then we need to remove the upper and the lower pinch bolts from the prop shaft. Once we have it ready, we can install this onto the steering rack's pinion and then connect it to the lower end of the power steering's output shaft. Slide the bottom part of the prop shaft through the firewall. Now you may have to move the tires back and forth a little bit to get the bottom part of the prop shaft to slide onto the steering rack's pinion. Grab the top end of the prop shaft and slide it onto the output shaft of the steering motor. Once it's in place, you'll have to move the prop shaft to allow clearance for the pinch bolt. Now before we tighten the pinch bolt for the length adjustment, we will need to go to the bottom where the prop shaft connects to the steering rack's pinion insert the bolt, tighten it, then we can come back to the length adjusting pinch bolt and tighten it. Be sure to reference your service manual for proper torque specs and procedures. Next we can take and mount the power steering control unit to the same bracket that the steering column is mounted to. We can take the long backing plate, set our last two fasteners into place, lightly thread them so that we can still move the power steering unit, now you'll want to set it in this location. Be mindful that the bracketry for the, the steering assembly itself will come through this hole here. So make sure you have clearance. Once you have the final location as to where it will sit, tighten the fasteners. So here we have the upper prop shaft. Now before we install this onto the top side of the power steering motor, we need to remove this pinch bolt and we need to make sure that the pinch bolt for the length adjuster is loose. Then we can install the lower end of the upper prop shaft onto the top side of the power steering motor. Once it is in place, you can install the pinch bolt. So this is our steering assembly. With the tilt steering shock out of the way, we're going to take this part of the assembly, rotate it back onto itself, and then we're going to turn it 180 degrees. It's from this position where we will start to install the upper part of the prop shaft. Now before installing the steering assembly onto the upper prop shaft, we'll want to take this spacer and slide it onto the shaft. Now once we have it threaded through, we're going to rotate this clockwise with the shaft coming through and then we will set it up into position. Now we can take the two bolts that we had removed earlier and reinstall them. Next we can install the tilt steering's shock. Next we can install the upper spacer. Now before we install the steering wheel onto the prop shaft, you'll want to make sure that it is lined up with your tires so that when your tires are straight, your steering wheel is straight. Once you have it where you need it, go ahead and install the steering wheel nut and torque to 65 foot-pounds. Now before we tighten this pinch bolt here, we need to make sure that we have proper clearance. So rotate your steering to inspect that it, the pinch bolt is clearing the steering bracket. Now in this case, it is not clearing the steering bracket. To get around this, we need to move the electronic power steering unit as far to the passenger side of the vehicle as we possibly can. Now once we have moved the electronic power steering unit to the passenger side as far as it will go, we can then tighten the four fasteners that connect both of the mounting brackets together. Once proper clearance has been achieved, you can then tighten and torque the upper and lower prop shaft's length adjusting pinch bolts to 15 foot-pounds. Next, we can connect the two connectors that come from the electronic power steering motor to the electronic power steering control unit. Make sure that you hear them click when they're in place. 
Next, we can take the wiring harness and connect the two connectors to the power steering control unit. Make sure you hear the connector snap into place. Now this red light will be used for troubleshooting the device if it is to encounter any problems. On the instructions will include a detailed list of how to diagnose the electronic power steering system. Now we can take the other end of the wire harness and route it through the machine's firewall. Next we need to take this white wire that breaks out from the original harness and connect it to a wire that has power provided to it when the ignition is turned to the on position. If you do not have this wire on your machine, make sure to locate a wire that has power provided to it with the ignition being turned on. Now we don't need this fitting at the end of the electrical wire, so we'll be removing it. To connect these two wires, we'll be using what is known as an electrical T-tap. So we will place this over the wire we are going to tap into and then set this one into the other available position. At the end of the electrical harness, you will notice there's an additional breakout wire that is colored blue. This will only be used on machines that currently have electronic power steering that are using the Tusk Power Steering Kit as a replacement. This blue wire will be connected to the vehicle speed sensor. For this installation, we will not be using this blue wire. We will cut the wire free of the harness, then seal it up with some electrical tape. Next, we can take the remaining wire harness from the power steering unit We'll route it down along through the cooling lines and back towards the battery. Once the wire harness has reached the battery terminals, connect the positive first, followed by the negative. Next, we can secure the wire harness with zip ties. Be sure to secure any additional loose wires so that they do not come into contact with the steering's prop shafts. Next, install the rubber grommet into the firewall. And that's it. That's how you install the Tusk Power Steering Kit. Now, if you have any questions or concerns as to what we've done here today, please feel free to leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Also, don't forget to check out our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com where you can find this accessory that we've just installed and many more products that will fit your side-by-side -side ATV and motorcycle. Also, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel and subscribe for more product spotlights, how-tos, and tests. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching, and keep turning those wrenches.